July 16, 2018. It's the Real Estate Guru Podcast. We are here to uh, enlighten you, incite you, and hopefully motivate you to get started in uh, real estate and or continue to push the limits. Uh, we have a guest who's starting to show up with us today. Uh, this is Mario's podcast. Mario Lloyd, he's Real Estate Guru PK on Instagram. What you got for us, Mario? What uh, what episode uh, is this? This is, this is nine. Episode nine. Yeah. So this is uh, eight more episodes than I thought I'd be on. So um, <laughs> the uh, today we've got a guest from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's right. And um, if you want to introduce yourself to the audience, uh, your sure. name and a little bit of background of, of um, what you got going on. Okay. So my name is Jennifer Anderson. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I'm going to be 35 this year. So, mm. uh, I hate talking about how old I am. That's okay. She no, looks no. like, she I'm look like she's 25. <laughs> I thought she was 25. I was like, you look young. You got all these businesses going to get started. But you but mature. Yeah. You mature. Go ahead. So, yes, um, I'm a nurse. Um, I actually specialize in critical care. So I worked in the ICU for about 10 years before I actually quit and started my own home-based business, which is home health care. Um, mm -hmm. And then after um, that, I kind of got into real estate a little bit. I had did odds and ends things, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, mm -hmm. online boutique, stuff like that, you know. Yeah. But I'm really passionate about, like, home care, like health care and yeah. real estate. So okay. you're no longer, um, you no longer have a, a job as a nurse. Yes. So I'm, I you employ myself. Yes, okay. Okay. Well, so, okay. Self-employed, yes. right? Yeah. Self yeah. That's good. Yes. That's good. That's do you good. have partners in that business? Cause I'm in the same field. No, hundred percent. my own. Are you serious? Yes. You got your own therapist going out and everything. Yep. I'm the nurse. So I'm the one that goes out. So that's what I, I pay myself to do. Excellent. And you got your own home health. That takes a, I mean, I'm in that field. So mm -hmm. you get to, to get through the regulation just to start it off is a pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very, mm -hmm. very, mm -hmm. Hard, <laughs> yep. complicated. Like yeah. you really de definitely have to jump through shoots and ladders to mm -hmm. get through. Yeah, I think that that business as a whole is is hard. It's mm -hmm. it's very rewarding, mm -hmm. um, but it's but it's difficult. It's not made for the faint of heart. Mm. Right. So you're from Milwaukee. Uh, you're originally from Mil Milwaukee. I am. And what are you doing down here? Um, visiting family. I have friends and stuff that relocated from there. Quite a few people from Wisconsin come to Texas. Oh to really? Live. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I think a lot of people come to Texas. <laughs> I know. Everybody's moved from Cali. Yeah. Them taxes. Yeah. Nobody wants to pay them taxes. Them state and taxes. Opportunity. And, and, and uh, there was a, a point in time when I was, um, this was back in 15. Um, they were saying that the average of 20,000 people were moving to Houston a week. Oh, wow. It's crazy. New, new people moving wow. to Houston a week. A week? A week. A yeah. Week. It slowed down a lot, but Thank God. that was that was where it was at. Um, for a long time. So L let me say, if you got an apartment, that's scary. If you got a house, you're kind of happy because the house prices go up, oh. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rental property, rental, yep. yeah, rent, rental. The, the real estate uh, that was re I was reading another thing uh, a couple of days ago that real estate in Houston is is up, and mm -hmm. Texas as a whole as as well. But mm -hmm. uh, it closed out really high, you know, for home sales, medium home prices. Um, you can't bu you can't buy a brand new house anymore for under two fifty. Oh, wow. Just, it just don't happen. Mm. I yeah. challenge anybody to go find yeah. one. That's <laughs> yeah. that's in a in a in a nice area. Area. So, yeah. Because uh -huh. I say like even um, the rapper that's making houses on Slim the north Thug. side. Yeah. Slim Thug. Yeah, he said his name. So Slim uh -oh. Thug. Shout out to Slim <laughs> Thug. Uh, but I I want to say his houses start around two. Two. Yeah. Four? I, I mean, thought I thought houses. He's in the ho home building. Business yeah, yeah, yeah. Now? He builds houses. Yeah. Oh, well, well, he, he, right? he buys the land and then he builds them. Yeah, I forgot what they call the company. Um, I think it's Boss, boss Life. Boss Life, yeah. Man. Boss Life Real Estate or Boss yeah. Re Realty, something like that. Yeah, something so. like that. Yeah. That's gangster, so. man. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's nice. That's Maybe it's not so gangster, but that's that's pretty cool, man. No, I mean it's a good yeah, way. Yeah, like you got money to sophisticated. Yeah. You know, he's uh, from, yeah. I guess, gangster rap to more sophisticated, you know. Everybody wants uh, to be a Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, it's, you got to make moves. Yeah, you do. You can't stay, you can't stay in the one spot. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Not if you want to grow. Yep. That's true. Um, so, Ball. Mario's question. Can I, can I, Mario? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Mario <laughs> likes to ask, <laughs> tell us about the come up, but... <laughs> What did you did you come right into nursing or did you uh, did you kind of get did you always want to be a nurse? Okay. What happened? So actually, no, I actually did not foresee myself being a nurse. Most people thought I was going to be a teacher starting off. Really? Like a teacher. Um, 
So yeah. Why um, is that? I don't know. Are you, I guess, are you good at teaching people things? Well, I guess I like kids. You know, I was really uh-huh. good with yeah. kids and things yeah. like that back then. I can then. see you being a teacher. Yeah. So. yeah. Or nurse. Same. So kind of. Yeah. I was actually, <laughs> my first job, I worked at TJ Maxx back at home. I was still in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, graduated from high school. Got my own place. Um, I didn't really have a close relationship with my parents. Yeah. So that kind of put a strain on things. So I really didn't know where I was really going starting yeah. off, you mm-hmm. know. So I had to kind of find my way. Really? Yeah. Wow. So our family's not real tight knit, kind of broken up. This so in Milwaukee? Yeah. I just figured no, <laughs> nobody has nothing to do. They just be like, ah. yeah. Yeah. So it went uh, from no, there. That is messed. Hey, I was <laughs> but, kidding, Milwaukee but I did, people. I did the math. I, you, I mean, you you got your you got your nursing degree kind of early. Yeah. yeah. I went 24, straight to 25. Yeah. yeah. So I went straight to um, college after I graduated high school. I was in um, the banking field actually. So my last year of High school, I got a promotion to a supervisor um, at the bank, so it was kind of stressful because a lot of the people were younger, I mean, that were older than me, and I was younger, mm-hmm. like, telling them what to do, per se, that's what they yeah. would say, and so they used to have attitudes with me a lot, so when I went to college and signed up, went down there to sign up for college, I kind of looked at the actual list of, like, occupations mm-hmm. and, like, career fields, yeah. and I just selected nursing, it was just weird. So I was like, well, I didn't want to. I knew I didn't want to go into accounting or banking because of the experiences I was already having uh-huh. at the job that I was at. Uh-huh. And so I said, okay, well, this might be a little challenging for me, but let me take, you know, take on the challenge. So I signed up for the program, got into the program, and it was very interesting to me just learning about the body, the anatomy, and stuff like that. So I stuck with it. It was the hardest thing ever. Oh, my God. It was very challenging. Because in high school, I never had to study. Things just kind of came to me, you know, Mm -hmm. and I was passing. But nursing, you really have to study. And it was definitely a process for me because um, I became more determined. One class, I felt one of my nursing classes by, like, a half a point. Yeah. And... That made me even more determined to like really get back in there uh-huh. and study hard and oh. get through it. So it was definitely rewarding for me because I challenged myself and I actually got through it. So science is a pain. Yes, like it I, is. I, I came from I got my first degree in criminal justice okay. and I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to be a, a lawyer or am I going to be a cop or work mm-hmm. the FBI? I was like, I always wanted to get into the medical field. So mm-hmm. I. I took some classes mm-hmm. and man, it was like coming from those that, those right. areas. The science was crazy, but yeah. no, I enjoyed it though. Yeah, I enjoy mm-hmm. I enjoy health. Yep, I think it's very rewarding career. I mean, with the nursing degree, you can pretty much do so many things. There's so many different avenues that you can take your nursing degree mm-hmm. on. So you can work at any time of the day, and you right. can always pick up some money. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, what made you uh, what made you stop? Wanting to be a nurse and then start like the home health care. Well, course. it's not that I wanted to stop being a nurse. Um, I worked All in right. the ICU, so I um, worked on the weekend program or whatever, which gave me the opportunity to stay at home with my son so I didn't have to put him in daycare. So he oh. would stay with his dad on the weekends, and then, you know, I would be with him through the week. But it gave me more time to, like, think about where I wanted to see myself in the next four or five years, you know. Mm-hmm. So I sat down and I was just like, okay, I need to do something. I want to open up my own, you know, business. So initially I opened up a group home. So I had a group home as well. Mm, Paperwork. (laughs) I know. So the group home was very challenging too because at the time I didn't have any knowledge or money to actually buy a property. So I was kind of under rules and regulations of the actual owner of the, Mm -hmm. you know, property. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, a headache dealing with the property manager. So what happened with that? So the house, I got it approved and everything. I got the contract to get the people in there. I had a four bedroom place, you know, decked it Uh out, nice, ready to go. They were really impressed because a lot of back home, the group homes don't have a nurse to really Mm -hmm. oversee the property. And I was a nurse. So they were very happy about that. So they were willing and eager to work with me because of that, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And people don't understand that too because then they're, you know, that it's a sense of security for them as well, knowing that you have somebody with a level of expertise also, mm. yeah. you know, partaking in the mm. care of these individuals that are going to be staying inside of the home. Yep. Um, so went through the things with that. Um, he did not want me to use it for that anymore because once he found out that that's what I was doing, 
He wanted to increase the rent, of course. Because you're making how money, how money now. Because yeah. I'm making I'm making more money. Yep. Yeah. And he wanted to now learn about the business and wanted me to, you know, Teach figure him. out. Ooh, you get what I'm saying? So kick you <laughs> out. <laughs> Yeah, I want you to teach me how to do what you're doing so I can uh, kick you out. And, yeah. So I was so it's devastated. Crazy. I ended up having to write the actual city, I mean, the state board, um, letting them know that I was going to have to shut my place down because it happened so fast. And if you don't notify them within like a 30 day time frame, if I ever in the future wanted to open up another home and if they called to house someone there and I wasn't open, mm-hmm. that would cause a conflict with them, you know. So um, how, how long did you have it at his house? Um, it it was about eight months. It didn't hit a year yet. How, how old were you then? Um, oh, how old was I? That was back in twenty thirteen. Twenty what? Twenty thirteen. Oh, okay, okay. That's five years. <laughs> Thirty yeah. years, right? Yeah. Thirty. Yep. So. Right. So that that was your first. Uh, so yeah. So then I I closed that down, but luckily. In the midst of that, I also, behind the scenes, because that was all completed and finished with, I was also looking into other business avenues to get into. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, during my downtime, when I was waiting for the state to come out and certify my home, I was also um, formulating policies and procedures to open up a home health care agency. So was that profit? Was it profitable? The uh, group home? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. For me, I was able to negotiate a rate, and I mean, I was going to be making. At I don't least know why you quit it. 000. Like you just you just find another house. That's what I would did. But right? that's the thing. Yeah. It was hard finding the same type of house. Like okay. for there, with the regulations and things of yeah. that nature, wheelchair um, wheelchair ramps are very um, key. You know, and we didn't have a wheelchair ramp, so it was semi ambulatory. So those who have canes, walkers, things of that oh, nature, okay. could house there. But there's an increased need for those who need um, wheelchair ramps, uh-huh. and so it's harder to get it certified if you don't have the uh-huh. accessibility for the wheelchair ramps. I'm thinking y'all could have built one. I would have paid for it. You would have no, paid for kidding. it. <laughs> Listen, I was I mean, broke. if you're making that money, I'd be like, all right, uh, I was we'll broke. do uh, 25 percent <laughs> interest. No, I'm just kidding. I was broke, and I was using all the money I had already had yeah, saved, yeah. you know, okay. to get the okay. furnishings because you have to furnish the house. I thought about that. That's the only reason mm-hmm. I'm, I'm inquisitive about that because yeah, no. I was like, man, those things I thought made good yeah. money. And so, no, they make good money, but the problem is you have to get them in there so you can start making the exactly. money, you know, all right. to do all right. that. And I wasn't real savvy and knowledgeable about, like, going to the bank asking for a loan and things of that you. nature. Mm-hmm. So I'm like I knew that. nothing about that. I don't want to be in debt. I don't want to <laughs> yeah. be in debt. Um, and so after that, so closed it down. I cried. Oh, I cried. Uh, I was so uh, hurt because I knew. I was like, I worked so hard for it. Yeah. And I took a um, photocopy of my um, certificate and stuff. I still have it, though. Did, did you try to negotiate with the with the – with the landlord no first? he was being a complete yeah sometimes so, so he, he just cut you they, off yeah he, probably, yeah. he wanted yeah. me to either put like this large lump sum deposit or buy the property which i would have had to come up with twenty five thousand cash Ooh. down so yeah. uh, <laughs> so i'm actually thinking that you probably could have worked out something for are you, he's gonna do it for sale by owner I'm not sure if that's the case that uh-huh. what he was trying to oh, do oh, he probably because he inherited the property from his parents or grandparents mm-hmm. or how, something how like old that was he is he an older dude or I'm not sure. I didn't I'm ask him, but he had to be a, like 30, 40. <laughs> yeah. 30, 40 ass yeah. old. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Did he, did, he didn't do anything after that, right? No. With with uh, Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. I think someone ended up buying it, and it's just some family wow. living in it now. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No, there, there's a lot of things that you could have possibly done. I mean, I don't know as far as owner finance, but anyways, moving on. Yeah. Uh, so then so after you learned that, a lot. You learned a lot. Yeah, oh, there. Yeah. Learned yeah. a lot about that. So then I vowed that if I did go back to reopen, I would absolutely find my own place, buy it, purchase it, do absolutely. all the stuff myself. So I didn't have to worry about the extra, you know, headaches exactly. behind that. Um, so then got my policies and procedures done, just went full for um, full fledged, proceeded with the home health care policies and procedures, got that stuff in, got approved. Finally, going through, you know, jumping over hurdles with that uh-huh. finally got that approved um got certified and then started that business so did that took off back in 2015 did you have a job then i did you so did. i was okay, still good. working at the okay. hospital good, on good, the good. weekend um and then dedicating full time monday through friday yep. you know to that to get that off the awesome. ground smart so kept the job at the icu was still working the weekends and then back in 2015 it became a little bit more of a demand on me because i was the actual nurse and at the time, I didn't have the funds to really pay 
a nurse to really do the job. Uh-huh. You know, I didn't want to be nickel and diamond yeah, the nurse because yeah, I yeah. wanted her to do a good job. So since I had the credentials, I decided to just do everything myself that required the actual nurse to wow. do. That's so you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. That's so uh, like, oh, uh, uh, when did you find like the hours and the time like with with being a nurse and then with the business, mother, and then, then your child, mm-hmm. like when like, so like you would get like so you was working like tw- like nurses they work like eight to eight and then they work to work like three four days out of the week. So yeah. me, I yeah. was working Saturdays and Sundays, okay. seven to seven. Seven to seven. And then Monday through Friday off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you was all, oh okay. She so was you just worked the weekend. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. 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 So you had that's a whole. A, that's a, that's a nurse weekend. schedule. Yeah. Yeah. They have, so they have I, good I, hours. I mean, yep, so the I had, hours are be- long. I had but, nothing but time. Yeah. I kept telling myself Monday through Friday to figure it out. Yep. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. Nice. So, so. That's a good. That's a good leverage of uh-huh. your time and your income. Absolutely. To catapult you into. So something I was else. broke. Oh, yeah. broke is a yeah. joke though, mm-hmm. because then work became very stressful. A lot of politics. I just feel like um, in the medical field, in the hospital, when you're working in a field with predominantly white mm-hmm. individuals unfortunately mm-hmm. you know you're a target for you know scrutiny Scru- yep. you know things of that Would nature you, i just had this we had the same <laughs> conversation uh a friend of mine um, named kiana has a home health care mm-hmm. uh, facility and uh not facility but uh you know in-home health care sure and um she's a she's a black woman and uh we had we were eating le- uh, dinner at um uh, her husband and me are best friends. Oh, okay. And uh, we were talking at dinner about exactly what you're talking about: mm-hmm. racism, a woman, you know, yeah. in the in the healthcare industry, dealing with the majority of of, of certain type of individuals. So. And I was the last black nurse standing on that floor, so mm-hmm. <laughs> it was stressful. So. It was very stressful. I cannot relate, <laughs> but I understand. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I could, I could relate. Yeah, you know, not, I can relate to that to to, to racism, but racism. not being not, not being a woman in the workplace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so now you you have uh, okay. So so after that, you went into the home healthcare business. Yes. And I'm sure you had some humps and bumps in there to get yes. to where you, how long has it been you, that um, you had your... So I started it in 2014 of October, and then I got Medicaid certified to be able to, you know, take Medicaid, take yep. Medicaid clients in um, the That's 1st it. of January of 2015. So okay. since then, we've been open and Good. functioning. And What about uh, uh, partners? She don't need none. I don't no. need any because <laughs> I am my own partner. I can hire myself to do the job. Yeah, I know. So... <laughs> This this is kind of like uh, Robert Kiyosaki. He has a book called Cash Flow Qu- Quadrant. Oh, okay. And it kind of lets me know where I'm at level. in the quadrant, right? Okay. Yeah. The first level is you're an employee, right? Right. So no matter how 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 much you work, mm-hmm. you you're not gonna get paid anymore. So somebody right. next to you, he's working harder mm-hmm. than you work unless you make the same, right? Right. Yeah. Then you go to self employment. Okay. The harder I work, which a, a lot of the jobs I do are self employed, right? Right the more I make, right? But there's only so many hours in the day, right? Absolutely. Right? <laughs> then he goes to the other quadrant, which is business owner. When mm-hmm. you're a business owner, you have other people working for you, right. making more money for you, mm-hmm. right? And you have policies and procedures. Like, if I go away for a month, mm-hmm. the business is still making money for me, right? Right. And that's a real business. Like, I'm sure you can relate to mm. some. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't good. go away for a month. All right. So, yeah. And then no, the, I can't. The, the last level he talks about is being an investor. Mm-hmm. I can just, you have a business over here. I can throw my money at it. Right. And then that's fuel to the, that's, you know, I can set the business on fire, meaning mm-hmm. it'll blow up just with my money. And then I, I get it like passive income from it. I don't really have to do anything. Thing, right. So. I'm always thinking, how can I step away from the business so that I'm not doing everything? Because and the whole goal is, right? Absolutely. And I, I agree with you so on that. So that you don't have to work, right? You yes. can watch people, other people work, and then you and can do that, whatever you want to do. And that's right? exactly what I'm struggling with right now. It's just very um, hard dealing with the state, and I get very apprehensive about it uh-huh. because – that when you find errors, you have to potentially know that you're going to have to pay money back. I don't uh, want to yeah. owe fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars back to the state because of an error. So I'm trying to learn how to do maneuver. everything. Maneuver through yeah. maneuver I think you're through doing everything. I think yeah. you're doing everything. I'm yeah. serious. You're like me. I like yeah. to know everything. I, and yeah. I, I have to double, triple check because yeah. in the back of my mind, it's like, oh my god, it's still going to fall back on me. That's right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that yeah. I'm having a struggle in that area right now. Y'all want to know the truth? <laughs> what? What's up? If you own a company, you're never going to be able to walk away you're from not. it. 
You're this not. Is impossible. That's what I've learned. Um, like, I agree, but if you have <laughs> the right manager, like you, you can, man, you yeah. can, you can manage the manager, and then you can double check, and mm-hmm. that you can step away. That's just my. So, so, so uh, I mean, you I, think I, I, I kindly disagree with yeah. him, mm-hmm. but I'm not gonna just. He's my boy. I'm not gonna just like, no, you're wrong, fool. Go but, ahead. Go ahead. But, but, uh, so. Give me some examples of people you know that run big companies that. I mean, we. Not, I mean, well, I'm not so, so I did, we're we're not we'll even classified Trump. as big companies. Right. We're classified as I'm a large small yeah. business. Yeah. So, give me some examples of somebody you know that has a large small business that can walk away. I mean, Trump. Or, or, Trump, or, Trump did that. He's president and he handed over to his son. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's the. I mean, still not the, necessarily. I mean, he's walking away, but like. In your case, you don't have a son. Yeah, we don't, that we don't that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, no, the, the problem was, because you do want to go vacay, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And and go, you know, willy nilly yeah. here and there. Now, I believe that you can afford some luxuries in time that the average working person doesn't. Yeah. Like if you want to go away for a week right. this month, and you want to go away for a week next month, and you want to go away for a couple of days two months I, later, I you can afford that. those luxuries. But yeah. the average person that has a job is like, I got to check, see if I get a days off. And unless you're a nurse yeah. okay. and you're off all, okay. you know, Monday through Friday. Yeah. So, but if you do work a nine to five and you work 40 hours a week, eh, you know, you're going to have to ask your boss for weeks off. I don't even know one person. Okay, we're talking about days the off. E. Employment, yeah, right? employment. All right, but go back to ownership. Yeah, um, owning a company, you can have some really, really good people in place, like some really key you gotta have figures. Systems in place, and you're still gonna have to go back and put your hands on it to make sure. Like, let's say there's a team of sales guys, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, if you have a sales manager who has a hefty salary or a decent salary, then he can oversee the sales guys. If you have an office manager, she can oversee there that. You but go. you're still gonna have to. Oversee, oversee those guys i agree and then your and then your expenses go out of the roof because now you got overseers experts, of the overseers yeah. who mm-hmm. all want to make a decent salary yeah. so like you have to build at that point you go from a large um small business to an actual large business with uh-huh. multiple functions of people you know doing Wait, all sorts of stuff let me let me let me say like this okay let's I say could be wrong though no I'm, no no I'm, you, I, you, you, you this is what i see you the man yeah. but what if <laughs> what if let's say you're making a half a million dollars a year, right? That's not enough. Okay. To do what no, you want to no, no, do. No, 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 I'm saying, let's say you're making a half a million dollars, right? Yeah. And from your business as profit, what you put in your pocket, right? Okay. Would you pay a guy $100,000 to oversee all the things that you're seeing? Like, you put a policies and procedures. Probably so, yeah. Because that's what a lot of yeah. other people do. There's people yeah. that have million dollar yeah, business, yeah, yeah. and what they do is that, you know what? I'll pay this person $100,000 just so, and I'm going to tell them exactly what I do every day, and they're yeah. going to report. This one person is going to report back to me, and yeah. I'm going to check. I agree. Yeah. I'll say yeah. And that's what I've seen some yeah. of these larger, yeah. like, what, you know. But you know how big yeah. you have to be to put 500 right. grand in your you're, pocket every year? You're like right. Your you're right. personal pocket every Absolutely. year? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. People that's, don't it depends, it. Yeah. it depends on what kind of business you got. Cause yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right, true. Never mind. Yeah. No, because I mean, yeah, it, it yeah. is it's rough. I mean, and then at the same time, yeah. if you can put 500 grand in your pocket, it's not the smartest thing to do tax wise. Yeah, tax wise. Uh, so, well, uh, you know, but I understand what you're saying. I was I in a partnership with guys that were making like $700,000. And, and what they were doing is they, okay, my wife's doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 250 right there. I'm doing this. And yeah. it, was, it was like breaking. And then we're going to put recovery. It's, I mean, this is yeah. Tax there's a, yeah, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of strategies. Loopholes. But anyways. But, but so, yeah, the answer is, you know, yeah, if you can put that much money in your pocket and you can, I would say probably yeah. promote yeah. somebody from in the ranks yeah. that mm-hmm. knows your business. I, that you can trust. That's yeah. hard to right. do, though. And yeah. it's so hard. It's hard to do. Because even still, when you have the systems in place, mm-hmm. things to still come back not complete. You're, you know, you're <laughs> so right, but you gotta you gotta double check though. Go ahead. Yeah. So do you have a manager? Um. Well, I don't have a manager. I have an off office. Like um, a secretary. Yeah. 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 Who okay. pretty much oversees like you know the charts and things uh-huh. of that nature, makes calls, faxing, scheduling. Um, yeah. Yeah. Scheduling yeah. appointments. She got to check. She got to check in with you every day. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah. What <laughs> no, you mean? No, no, no. There's a every day. There's a there's a book called the E Myth. Two women I talk to every yeah. day. My wife and my secretary. Right. <laughs> there's a sure. book called the E Myth. That's why I'm I'm talking about uh, why mm-hmm. I'm saying this. That okay. it's always talking about you got to create a process to free up your life and yeah. don't be afraid to hire assistants. Even like okay. right now they have things called virtual assistants. Okay. Like, you can hire people in the Philippines to do some of the, the little stuff that you do day to day. 
And these people have master's degrees. They have uh, master's degrees in accounting. They, mm -hmm. but they only make the average salary over there is like three, uh, three hundred dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? Wow. For yeah, people right. that have a master's degree, because our dollar is so strong. Right. Yeah, he you know told me about that. He told me I should do that. Well, I, I mean, I'm, huh? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, Interesting. So no, I'm just, I'm just saying, always think of like how can I free up my time or I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be insane. I'm gonna go insane. Right. Literally, I was going insane. So I was just like, no, I understand because yeah. I have days sometimes where I don't get enough sleep yeah, seven and I wake days up a week? and I'm up till one o'clock in the You're morning and then though. wake back up at yeah. six. Yeah, you know, I, was, I would love that partner. I do that every day. Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm serious. That's why I'm like, if people like, like, how do you do it? I'm like, you have to. Who else is gonna do yeah. it? I gotta do it. But yeah. I, but yeah. I, I don't I don't wake up with that dread. Like Me I wake either. up like time yeah. to get it. Like you know? it's time. Like we're, we're that's just my life. Yeah. I wake up like I don't want to do this, but I gotta do it because I'm with Ron, man. I'm not. You want to do what you want to do, right? You want to go to the gym, hang out at the gym. I be thinking about what I'll you be, got going on i'd be like man if i was doing the uh, house i said that mother be done dude. like that i'm talking about like done done that's because y'all are three days bodies. We're done like, <laughs> we like to we like I'm, to I'm stop mario we like to stop my house roses was, right my house was done in five days by yeah. the way so. done baby three in and out <laughs> done. Three. <laughs> three days <laughs> three days um, it, it would have been done in three days but but my man, he, he left. Oh yeah, day. your mom. Your mom got. She, you know, she hurt her back too, right? No, no, no he's lying. Oh, that's goodness. because you had your mom working, pulling up time. <laughs> yeah, I, I had my mom paint those baseboards. Uh, oh, man, it's real out here. But it's, it's cool. Miss Lord, Miss no, Lord, I apologize. Mario no. had your, your hey, every working an, every anniversary. Man, they get a nice, hefty gift. And, All right. You no, know, nah, I'm just they kidding. Get money. Had your no, dad, you got a real dad family, dude. Paint. Yeah, no, that's cool. Family that works together stays together, right? My family, we ain't like that. Yeah. Hey, but Sunday, not nah, mine either. But no, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. My mom and dad. Yeah, my dad yeah, will do anything yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I don't know the rest. Hey, of them. Sunday, I helped my dad demo his his, his upstairs. So you know, mm -hmm. I scratched their back. They scratched yeah, I got mine, you. I got you. Know. you. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah that's, that's good, man. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do it, but I can send somebody to go do it. That's, right. That's yeah. what I say. But um, so you, so so our guest is a was a nurse, still is a nurse, mm -hmm. uh, has her own business and has decided to come into real estate. Correct. So you have rentals. Yes, I do. Tell us about your first one. What oh. what, what made you decide to, hey, I got to buy property? Okay, so because I'm always trying to figure out ways to make money, I'm thinking like, okay, I'm not a real big spender either. I oh. save. I mm -hmm. don't splurge. I don't, I'm not all into that, you know, name brands and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, gotcha. So I keep, um, I kept, money as leverage too for like extra payroll just in case something were to happen you know so i can cover payroll which i'm having an issue right now with that mm -hmm. and i was able to cover their payroll for three months so cool i'm cool with that <laughs> I'm, I'm so you have to be very very smart some people are not you know smart enough to understand that you can't just spend as soon as you get it mm -hmm. you know you have to make sure that you have a backup plan in case things go wrong because they do go, they wrong, go wrong and you yes. never know when it's gonna go wrong that's right so Thank God for that mindset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but did you learn that, or somebody told you that, or through mistakes? No, I just learned that myself. Taught okay. myself that just because, I guess you know all the things that I have kind of been through taught me to always be prepared if oh. I can be prepared. Yeah, you yeah. know, so I just always had that in the back of my head. So you always saving money for a rainy day. Yes, yep. always. So, so hold your story there. Mm -hmm. I was having the same conversation. Mm -hmm with uh two people um today we're we, we're looking at a custom home and uh the builder is my age okay you know and he's this is his, his fourth year in mm -hmm. building custom homes and he started out xyz the, there was another gentleman there who was my age too who owns a crane company mm -hmm. and uh him and his wife and we were talking about the woes of owning a business and you know all the other stuff right and um so he was we were talking about that like if you're not smart and you start seeing money rolling, the average person starts saying, oh, I can go get this Escalade. I can go get this, you know, these Absolutely. these clothes and oh. I got to have the latest this, the latest that. And you can spend the money. Right. It goes like, you just, oh, okay, I'm going to buy this. And sometimes I fall into that trap. Right. But I don't buy items. Like, I buy things that, that interest me. Like, okay. I get into cameras or something. Oh, okay. I got to go buy the latest camera, you know, whatever. <laughs> but um, Private jets. Yeah. No. <laughs> anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we were talking about that Barbecue. exactly. So, mm -hmm. like, I was telling him, I was like, yeah, you know, like, you know, and the guy drove Escalade, but it was an old one. Okay. And he was like, you know, yeah, I want a new Escalade, but, you know, I got to make sure payroll's covered. Because you can imagine if you own a crane company, 
what's your overhead? Exactly. Like your bills coming in there in the they're in the twenties and thirties thousands mm-hmm. of dollars. Absolutely. You know, so that's smart uh, for anybody out there who's listening that 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 has just got into a business and starting seeing mm-hmm. money flow in. Hold it, save it. Yes. Do whatever you got to do to stash it in case you need it. That's that's smart tax wise. Go ahead. So a year passed, and I was just like, okay. What should I do? Like, I've always had an interest in possibly getting into real estate, but never really jumped on it because I was real nervous about it because I didn't know anything about it. So I was always scared, you mm-hmm. know, to take that first step. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started following certain people on Instagram, coming across certain posts, and then I ended up running into Mario. Mm-hmm. Um, and he had made a post about a, a property he had purchased that was in foreclosure and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, hmm, maybe I should, you know, tap into that. Mm-hmm. Start talking to a few people back at home, networking with them. I ended up um, meeting a friend of mine's um, wife. You know, I didn't know that that was his wife at first, but her um, daughter and my son go to the same school, and we were at parent night, and she and I became real close. And her family is really, really big in real estate. So mm-hmm. she, um, they own uh quite a few oh i mean almost half of the city you know (laughs) of milwaukee so Mm -hmm. um i talked to her a little bit about it just kind of asking her can i come to her office and you know help her out with some things just so i can start learning you know Mm -hmm. a few things so she openly allowed me to come and you know i really appreciate her for that and then she ended up telling me about um an opportunity where i could go and take a look at some foreclosures and i did and so um she showed me how to kind of look up things and, you know, I went down there one day and I put a bid in and I actually won the bid and I had got my first place. So Cool. How'd you, uh, if you want to give some people some details of how you funded that deal? Um, with the money that I had got from my business, I took that money and then I paid cash for it. Okay. You cool. paid for Excellent. the entire, for the entire mm-hmm. thing? Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good, good. I good. mean, what, what, uh, what was the, what was the specs? Um, yeah, info on the house. Like, give us a price. So range. it was a condo, yeah. and I paid ten thousand for it. Oh, oh nice, nice, yep. nice. Ooh, that's a win. Mm-hmm. What's? Do you still have it? Two and a half. Um, well, it's um, two bedrooms, one and a half bath, basement. You st- and you still have it? Yep, I still have it. What's it rent for? Um, nine hundred. That's a win all day. Yep. Oh man. <laughs> and then like, and then did you have to fix it? No. Wow. Yeah, Are well, you with, with, serious? With her, with her first three rentals. Yeah. Can you find me she, another one? <laughs> <laughs> With her first three re- rentals, she was able to just move the renter right in. Like, they were ready to yeah. go. That's crazy. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Second one, how long after the first one? Um, so, after that one, um, I ended up um, looking into some more things. Um, this lady, she fell into foreclosure on her place with the bank. Um, and it's a five-bed, one-and-a-half bath. And I got that one for around, like, 12000 Oh, Come five, on. Five, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> five five oh, bit. Stop five. the podcast. <laughs> yo, yo, Mario, why are you not buying these? <laughs> this is Milwaukee. It's not Houston. Doesn't matter. You can own real estate anywhere. I know. You're I told international, him bro. I told him that. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna have to pay her. That's why you own Do you still property. see those kind of deals? Well, it so it's becoming a little bit more popular yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. So now the market, there's a lot more people that are coming and, you know, trying to get mm-hmm. those deals. How's the um, economy down there? Mm, I mean, okay, so the properties, too, it depends on where you're getting them from, too. Location is very mm-hmm. important, too, yeah. depending on a lot of people back at home, like with the appraisals, too, they don't like you coming into their house, so their appraisals are, like, kind of stuck at from, like, five to ten years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times if they have made updates and stuff like that, you would have to get get the appraiser to come in and reappraise on those, it. On those mm-hmm. foreclosures. And stuff like that. So Tomorrow on the foreclosures. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's good, though. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's good and bad. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's people, good when you're trying to purchase it. And then you refi, you got instant equity. I think, you know, the cost of living is not super expensive where we are. I mean, dependent. I mean, I feel like we get paid enough to, to live. To live. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not like this, you know, yeah. and large the, amount of. The third one? How long after one. did you buy that? Um, January of this 20. Um, yeah. 2018. 2018. What, what was the specs on that one? Um, so that one, the city mm-hmm. owned. Um, it's actually um, my fiance's grandmother's house. So I ended up finding out that it was on, you know, the city's list. Mm-hmm. Ended up um, checking it out. Um, somebody ended up, I guess, getting 
into some um, chase by the police because this one is in the like deep inner city, like in the hood, oh. what uh -huh. we considered the inner city mm -hmm. hood or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and ran into the porch, so the porch was completely like you know ripped off the house and stuff like that. So um, I got that one in January, and um, I hired someone to actually come in and do the work so that we could at least either get a tenant in or possibly sell it, but he doesn't want to sell it because it's got a lot of sentimental value. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking to see if maybe someone within their family will rent be it. wanting to sure. either rent it or buy it because we have a system called Rent Assistance back at home. You guys probably call it Section 8 here. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and see if someone, you know, we can get someone in there to start renting it out. But anyway, that takes me back to this is my first one that I ran into some issues with needing work. Gotcha. that needed to be done gotcha, gotcha. so um i ended up calling and reaching out to people different various people just to like see contractors yeah contractors yeah. to see what kind of bids i can get because the city will give you what they think it costs to get it up to code and get livable here. yeah so you <laughs> no, look it, at it's the what's got to so you will look at the list and you can see every single thing that pretty much you um, need to do and what they consider can be self-help so you can do it on your own and what will require a permit and what won't require a permit. So nice. um, the scope of work is what mm -hmm. they call it came out to be um, like 27,000 um, and I reached out to a few people. I had like three people in mind and so I ended up finding out that uh, a, a guy that I really knew or thought I knew <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is the one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go for it. Um, so, so he used to um, go out with one of my real close friends or whatever, yeah. and he knew me. We knew each other. We were real cool. Do He's that. real do, do. popular up in the city of Milwaukee. He has a couple bars and, you know, clubs or whatever. So he's – Red light. Red light, red light. Red light. Yeah. I mean, those are signs. Oh, that's signs? Oh a couple of God. bars. Yeah. A <laughs> couple yeah. of bars. Yeah. More Strip drinking. clubs. Yeah, so, you know, I thought he was a real cool individual. It appeared that his places have been open for a prolonged period of time, yeah. so I didn't foresee it you being. You saw credibility, You right? know, I, I mean, you know, yeah. I give people a chance, yeah. you know, obviously. Credibility, right? Yeah. You know where to find him, right? I know where to find him. Exactly. I know where he hangs out at, you know. <laughs> yeah. If I obviously. Find you, I'm uh -huh. find you. Okay. Obviously. So, tell us what. Tell, him, tell everybody what happened. So, I I bring him in. I, I reach out to him. I'm like, hey, I DM'd him on Instagram. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm getting this property. I have a scope of work I want you to take a look at. Da, 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 da. Him and the realtor that I worked with actually ended up knowing each other. So Everything she knew him. was mm. perfectly. It was perfect. just like, oh, my this God. Is meant to this be, is right? going to happen. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah, I can't believe yeah. this is going to happen. <laughs> so it happened. he walks in. We go through it. He's like, oh. I can get this done. I'm like, okay, so what you thinking the price is? He has the scope of work in his hand completely, yeah. right? And um, he clearly knew everything on the scope needed to be done because why would the city provide you the scope yeah, yeah, if yeah. you didn't know that uh -huh. it needed to be done? Yeah. And um, supposedly I'm his 26th customer, okay? We're mm -hmm. going to put quotation marks on that. So I'm his 26th customer. So I'm like, okay, cool. Well, let me know what you think the price is going to be so we can, you know, seal the deal yeah, before yeah. I close. And at least I don't know who I'm going through. So I'll know I have the cash, you know. He doesn't need to know what I have in my account. I don't need to tell you what I have in my account. Your number is your number. Right. So I exactly. don't need to discuss with you if I have the 27 or not. Right. If so, you're going to give me a price. So he was like, how, he was like, how much you got? He yeah. Like, how much you got? So he didn't ask me how much I got. Oh, okay. He didn't even ask that question. That's a car dealership question. Yeah. yeah. How much <laughs> you got? <laughs> so... Um, I come back and I'm like, hey, so what you thinking? He said, oh, I can get this done, knock this out, and have this ready for you by March. And I, I said, okay, so how much are you going to charge me? Mm -hmm. And he was like, twelve five. Half of what you Too were. Too good to be true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I was like, are you sure? Yeah. I literally said, are you sure? Look and awe. Yeah. He was like, yeah, I mean, you can ask, you know, Nicole, that's my girl, you know, the realtor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get this done. She was like. So I called her. I called her up on the phone. I'm like, hey, Nicole. So, you know, he gave me a, a price. And she's like, well, what did he quote you? And I said, 12.5. She said, really? I said, yeah. I said, are you sure? She was like, I mean, well, if he said he can get it done for 12.5, I'm not saying it can't be done. It can be done. But, I mean, maybe he, you know, he's he, got he, a he deal knows, on he some, knows something. I don't know. Yeah, as yeah. far as, like, you know, <laughs> materials. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. You know. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay, well, 12.5 it is, you know. We ran with it. Um, I ended up meeting with him and then his partner, 
So they have a company called Homes and Blakely Realty Ooh. or Restoration. <laughs> so I'm throwing that name out there so everybody knows, but it's called Homes and Blakely Restoration. Watch, so watch out. What I was under the (laughs) (laughs) so what I was under the impression was is that his partner pretty much did all of the paint jobs because I've seen some of their work, pictures and everything, stuff that they sold, put on the market, and things of that nature. um, That he just primarily did painting, and he was like the back end, like finance guy because he works in banking. Mm. So he does a lot first time home buyer things. So like when they find people to purchase the homes that they done you know stuff like that so they had their little business thing going on with that um so i sat down with them and he was like oh man jen yeah he's giving you a real deal we consider you a sister so we're, we're gonna make sure we get this done and treat it like it's ours and da 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 you know and i'm like okay he was like because you know we don't need the money that's why we're doing this for this you know because this this is a low low price. Mm-hmm. I looked at it and when he told me what he told you, I was just like, mm, they some real ballers. That so I was like, oh, <laughs> I said, well, that's great. Then I need to be working with somebody who doesn't need my money. Then yeah, if yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, case. Yeah. And he was like, okay. So we sat down. We ended up signing the contract or whatnot. Now that was my number one mistake because I completely didn't realize that when we were signing that contract, he was not attaching the scope of work as I asked him to do to that contract. So they picked out what they wanted on the contract. Mm-hmm. But under in my impression, it looked like it was his partner who was going to do those specific things, oh. yeah. not him, what he had already promised me that he was going to do. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So he, he gave himself out legally. <sighs> exactly. Mm-hmm. So, oh, we fixed that. Because mm-hmm. once I caught on to it, mm-hmm. I did what I needed to do to get them back into the office so we can sit down collectively and put the scope back into place and ask them to give me a remainder amount of what was going to take to get the house completed according to the scope that was provided at the very beginning of the quote that he gave me for the 12-5. Well, what do you say? Um, they signed it. Oh, they signed it? And then they it? tried to lie and say they didn't sign it. <laughs> mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? They don't yeah. have a copy of it for some odd reason, but yeah. I do, yeah. you know. But anyway, so we, we got to moving along. Things were going really well in the beginning. Obviously, they cleaned it out, got the um, paint and stuff that they were supposed to be doing to the project, um, bought what I thought some materials. Then I start noticing as we start getting towards March that things were just not looking the mm-hmm. greatest, you know. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff were rigged up, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, what do you call the little... Um, the light switch covers, uh, face plate covers, face, yeah. yes, face plate, face plate covers and socket covers were all different colors, you know, <laughs> not one color white. Like cream, and then he was white. changing paint colors, telling me that, oh, I thought since it was a rental, I could change it. You don't change what I asked you to do. If I asked you to paint it white, you should have painted it white like I asked you to. Mm-hmm. Don't change the color of the paint, mm-hmm. you know, just because you thought this is not your property at the end of the day. You're supposed to be doing the work. Mm-hmm. So little things he was just doing was just not sitting well with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I had to meet with his partner because I kept reaching out to him. He stopped answering the phone. He was out of town or whatever. And then his partner was like, I've never seen the scope. I've never seen the scope. So we sat down. I said, well, when your partner gets back in town, you, Thomas, and I need to sit down as a group so that we can go over this so we know where we're at so that I can continue to move forward. They were coming back asking for like $600 for electrical, $500 for plumbing, you know, just extra stuff. Yep. I didn't care about the extra because I had already knew he lowballed me to begin with. I had the money, yep. but I didn't need to tell you I had the money. If you gave me a price,